You've made mistakes in your past, and every time you think about them, you beat yourself up, thinking it will keep you from repeating those mistakes. But it never really works. Today, I'm going to explain why this doesn't work. And by the end of this episode, you'll learn how to stop beating yourself up and get curious instead, so you can be more effective and lower your chances of repeating past mistakes. This is Consent to Treat, the podcast where you hear real life counseling sessions followed by information and tips you can use in your life today. My name is Rachel Sievers. I'm a retired psychotherapist and I've logged over 12,000 hours counseling individuals and couples in private practice. I'm bringing the life-changing benefits of counseling to you because I believe everyone deserves access to the tools, knowledge, and compassion that counseling provides. Today, I'm sharing a recent counseling session with John, where I catch him beating up on himself for a time in his life when he was depressed. Notice that in this session, I tell him he's more likely to repeat that time in his life if he continues to beat himself up for it. Let's take a listen. The first thing that comes back to my head is when I'm here with you, there's an immense amount of gratitude that I, you know, thank you for, you know, helping me get tools. But really, it's the fact that I'm so grateful for the things that you've taught me and guided me through because now I'm a better friend. I'm a better son. And me being a better son is literally like my family's, they live better because of it. My friends are better because of it. Mm -hmm. And it's like the ripples of that Mm -hmm. is endless because, you know, like now that the work is working, I'm not the only one benefiting from it. And I can't wait. Like I'm hopeful. I wake up hopeful, happy, not happy, but like, I feel like that's content. I like the word content. Yeah. At peace, content. Happy. Yeah. Yeah. And it literally changes my decisions. I'm not sluggish. I'm Daz Mac in the middle of my journey. And every single time that I'm asked to take a leap of faith, I will take every single one of them. Beautiful. I will take every single one of them because I've seen how it works. Mm -hmm. I've seen how it works. And like, I want to write my life as I please mm-hmm. and as this thing this greater power guides me through it yes. you know like every second minute hour so of the day it's been guiding you the entire time yes it's just you know like more aware now less aware then <laughs> yeah again and I, I know you know this but being in your bed eating hot cheetos with the blinds closed that wasn't bad mm-hmm. <laughs> i still see? have see see, <laughs> see? <laughs> i have I still have that thing in me. That's I like, have it too. Yeah. I have it too. Mm-hmm. I call my 20s my my dark ages. Mm-hmm. I wasted. I wasted. I have this negative perception. I wasted 10 years of my life. Gone. Gone. Didn't learn anything. Wasted them. Yeah. You know, making stupid decisions. <laughs> Smoke endless amounts of cigarettes. <laughs> I mean, come on. Got fat. I mean, like, <sighs> why are we talking to ourselves like that? It was a necessary part of our journey because trust me, how you're feeling right now, you wouldn't even identify this mm-hmm. as peaceful if you weren't able to understand what laying in a bed for days and days in a dark room felt like. That's a great point. We have <laughs> to we have to experience both. Yeah. To even know what they feel like. Yeah, I agree with that. And honestly, but it, it kind of makes you want to hit me, right? When I'm like laying in the bed for for all that time, it was it was like good. That was good. <laughs> it's like shut the fuck up, bitch. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I could have been running marathons. I could have been, I don't know. Yeah, I could have been. I could have been leveling up. I could have been earning hearts. I could have been doing whatever, but it was good. It was, yeah. I don't know why, but I do have a little bit fear of it too. I, I fear it. Like, I, I don't know why I fear it. Like, I fear, I fear getting back to that place. Like, I want to do everything in my power to structure something that even if I go there, let's not go too deep back. Because that was... Oh, okay. So if you have negative feelings about it, uh-huh. your chances of going back to it are way higher. Oh, so I like... Never mind. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. I if you I'm... embrace it and you love it and you're so grateful for that period and what it gave you and what it taught you and the contrast that it's given you in your life so that you can see what this is like and what's that. If you can be so grateful for that time, you won't go back to it. As long as you're afraid of it, you will go back to it. There'll be the call of the void. Yeah. As long as you continue uh, thinking it's a negative yeah. thing, you'll have the call of the void, that pull. That pull towards, towards it. That, that romantic air of your life where you're just, oh. Yeah. I, actually, you know what? That's a good way to look at it. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Super romantic of me to live that, you know, like, oh, I'm going to be an artist and I'm not, you know, I'm just going <laughs> to read books and be a little hermit in my own room. Yeah. Yeah. I, 
I still do have fears in some of them, like you know, like on the things I've failed on, I have immense fear in them. Like I, like I told you about how happy or how gratifying and how rich that feeling was when I saw somebody graduate. But to start again after you failed like three times is like the first time was okay, second time was weird, <laughs> third time it's all my fault. <laughs> but I can't always pull from that situation, you know, like oh. But I'll get a diploma and I'll, you know, I'll learn more. And I still can't. I've had that paradigm shift on my outlook on it, but I'm still fearful of school. It's not that I think I hate school. It's I think that, yeah, I have a certain fear about it because mm -hmm. I haven't been there in so long. Sure. And that's the thing I'm next conquering is what's going to happen if, <laughs> if I fail again. You know, what, what's going to happen if I fail again mm. and stop going and say fuck it to everything i don't like that oh it makes me feel icky like i want to embark in that journey but like that, that's the thing that's not like not stopping me but it's making me hesitate let's talk about john a really important topic if you're afraid of it you'll go back to it if you're grateful for it Chances of you going back to it, slim. Let's talk about this. In John's session, he talks about his depression days with a lot of criticism, almost kind of making fun of himself, putting himself down for that. He feels like it was time wasted. Phew, can I relate to that? You know, and I think all of us can. You know, we look back on a period of our life that we consider a mistake or time wasted, or like we did something wrong during that period. So now we regret it. Well, so for John, he's talking about it in this sort of derogatory way, because he's afraid of returning to that state. And it's almost like he wants to keep tabs on himself. <laughs> and the way he's doing that is by being critical or derogatory about that period so that he doesn't go back to it. But what I point out to John is that the more you hate it, the more critical you are of it, the more afraid you are of that time in your life and afraid of returning to that time in your life, the more power it has. The chances of you returning to a state of no self-care, depression, non-productivity and whatever it is that you're berating yourself for chances of you returning to that if you continue to berate yourself are pretty likely let's think about it like someone who maybe gained 50 60 pounds in their 20s okay they weren't exercising eating really unhealthy really stressed out just not in a place where they were taking really really good care of themselves well let's say they turned a leaf and they switched their thinking and they were exercising four days a week, eating really healthy food, prayer, meditation, all this stuff that was like really good for them. But they continued to bash themselves for having gained weight in their 20s. I was such a fat ass. I have it in me to be such a pig. What a dark time in my life. No wonder no one would date me. You know, someone who talks about that period like that, the chances of them returning to that are quite likely. If that person instead has an attitude of, I am so grateful I got to experience that. I know the kind of lifestyle that works for me and doesn't work for me now. Now I'm able to see the contrast between health and unhealthy lifestyle, right? So I am grateful for the lessons. I'm grateful for the experience of it. Thank God that I went through that time. Chances that this person's gonna return to that very unlikely. Now, why is this? When we are critical of ourselves or a period of our lives, we are keeping ourselves from being in a position of examination, curiosity, open-heartedness. So it's keeping you from looking at that time, looking at yourself with curiosity and saying, you know what, what, what was going on with me during that time? If I'm so busy beating myself up, like what a piggy, what a dumbass, how could I do that? How could I waste all that time? I, I'm completely missing an opportunity to ask myself, what was it that made me overeat? What was that lack of energy about? Those moments of curiosity are what leads us to, aha, 
I have an addictive personality. I know this about myself. Or, aha, when I get in a relationship, I tend to get a little bit lazy. Aha. Okay, so it keeps us from being curious, which keeps us from learning about ourselves. When I know that I have an addictive personality or have a tendency to get lazy when I'm in a love relationship, then moving forward, I can take the steps that I need to take to care really well for myself. Stop beating yourself up. Just be curious and loving about yourself. Then all the answers are right there. Carl Rogers says that as long as you're judging yourself, you will not grow. That organic growth happens. Organic growth. Like you don't even have to try to grow anymore. It just fucking happens. He says that it happens when a person reaches a place of self-acceptance. Self-acceptance is not saying I beat my wife, but I'm okay with it. Self-acceptance is I know who I am and I don't judge myself for it. I'm simply in a state of knowing and understanding and non-judgment. Okay, It's not self-allowance. It's not a ticket to just do whatever you want. Self-acceptance is just knowing and not judging. Okay, So th this is sort of an example of that. What's interesting is that we feel like the judgment and the berating ourselves and the putting ourselves down for things is what is benefiting us. Like as if, if we take that weight off of us, that somehow we're just going to go do all the terrible things that we're trying to keep ourselves from doing. But it's actually the opposite. I want to point out that this isn't just for time periods that we're afraid we're going to go back to. It applies to everything. So yeah, we can look back at periods on our life and we can be really critical. We don't want to go back to that. But let's say I'm, I'm just fed up at work and I really want to quit my job and I'm just being really critical on myself and I'm calling myself a failure and a loser and I just quit things that are hard and I'm berating myself for it. Can we just, can we take that weight off and replace it with what about this job makes me want to quit? What about, you know, me makes me want to quit things when they get difficult? Okay, I worry about being a failure. And so I, you know, if we can approach things with curiosity instead of judgment, it allows us to get to a place of self-awareness, problem solving. Gosh, does it just feel so much better to approach life like that? So with John, it's a period of his life he doesn't want to go back to, but it applies to everything, to everyone all the time. Don't criticize, berate, and be afraid of the dark stuff. Dive into it with curiosity. Knowledge is waiting for you there. I know I've said this a million times. If you follow my work, you've heard this before, but here I go again because it's so appropriate. Think about everything in your life like a scientist would think about it. So for instance, imagine a scientist finds a new species of bug. Is the scientist going to look at the bug and say things like the legs are so long and gross and the spots are the wrong color and they're in the wrong place and the antenna are ugly. No, a scientist is going to look at the bug and say the legs are this long, the spots are this color and they are placed here and the antenna are this shape. It's just factual. What I'm describing today is releasing yourself from the burden of judgment and replacing it with factual thinking, thinking like a scientist would think about things. So if a scientist were watching you want to quit your job, would the scientist say, this person is incredibly lazy, they're a loser, they're just a terrible human being? No, a scientist would look at you and say... Your heart rate goes up when you enter the cubicle. You have a strong desire to be in a different place. These are the types of thoughts that you have, whatever. A scientist would look at you and just see facts. The more you can do that, A, your quality of life will go up because it's so stressful judging yourself and being afraid of the dark parts of yourself all the time. That's just a stressful energy suck of a way to live. And B, you will learn so much about yourself and you'll be able to direct your course of action with such ease and confidence. So my tips for listeners is anytime you find yourself being critical, okay? So when you're using words like bad, wrong, should, I should have done this, I should have done that. If you're using negative words to describe yourself or a time in your life or a situation, stop yourself and say, hold on. I'm going to just be curious like a scientist. What are the facts here? What can I learn about myself? And 
with the knowledge that you come up with during your curiosity, make decisions with that new knowledge. They will be so much better than decisions that are born out of judgment and criticism. Promise you. Good luck, everybody. Thank you so much for listening, beautiful people. This has been Consent to Treat Podcast. If you want exclusive content like full recorded sessions with my clients, the chance to ask me your questions, join me on group Zoom calls, and get access to content that no one else gets to see, then subscribe to me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Rachel Sievers. 